Hello, my name is Jason Peters. I'm a journalist on assignment for Grid Magazine. Today, we are out here in Media, Pennsylvania in Delaware County and behind us, the Mariner East Pipeline is being constructed. This segment of the pipeline is currently dividing the Glen Riddle Station's apartment buildings two from the other three. The Mariner East Pipeline is a 350 mile natural gas pipeline set to stretch across the entirety of Pennsylvania from east to west carrying natural gas liquids from the Marcellus and Utica shale fields. Across Pennsylvania, Sunoco has already been found negligent in Chester and Delaware County for failing to properly disclose all risks posed by a potential leak. Today we are interviewing ownership as well as a resident from Glen Riddle Station Apartments. I am here at the Glen Riddle Station's apartments with Steve Yakabuchi. Steve, um, could you explain who you are and what, what your uh, relationship to this apartment complex is? Yep, absolutely. Thank you for, uh, thanks for being here, Jason. My name is Steve Yakabuchi. I'm with Glen Riddle Station Apartments and one of the owners and we're the property management operators here of the um, apartment community. Um, this is a 124 unit apartment community. It's uh, five buildings here on the property. Got it. And uh, right behind us is a big green wall. It, it is a sound wall. Could you explain a bit about what that is and why it's here? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a uh, sound wall that was uh, erected by Sunoco Energy Transfer Partners for the uh, construction of their pipeline. Um, on the other side of the wall is a property that was temporarily condemned by Sunoco uh, to install their, their pipeline. And what was there before that wall was there? That was a, generally in the center here was grass, and this property has a driveway and a parking area that would go all the way around, um, a circle around the entire entire community. And, and you, and you, you had said that Sunoco had condemned uh, that land. What does that mean, and how does Sunoco have the ability to condemn land? Yep, so for the portions of, um, portions of the property within the wall, uh, Sunoco used uh, the courts for uh, condemnation. They have been... Um, deemed a, a public utility, so they have the, the rights to condemn or temporarily condemn property for their work. Um, has it caused any issues for the people that live here or for the owners? Yeah, so this um, this work started in November, right, uh, actually right before Thanksgiving, um, and then through the holiday season, and it's been, a, it's been a battle to really get safety questions and concerns addressed caused by the operation. And have you heard that recently Sunoco uh, was guilty of negligence in recent counties throughout Pennsylvania for about the same thing? We, we've heard uh, a lot recently, especially in the last week or so, of different uh, articles coming out and pieces of information. Particularly, we're aware of some um, information in, in, in Chester County. Uh, we're currently in Delaware County, mm -hmm. but it's uh, also related to the same installation of, uh, of the pipeline. So... What issues has this caused? It's been here since November 2020. We're, we're, we're recording this in late April of 2021, and it's here till when? So we are being told that um, it will, they will be working here in some capacity June, July. Uh, so there's no definitive answer to that, but that's what we are being told. Uh, what were you told time. before this started? We've heard, been told a few different things. We've heard anything from maybe four months to a bit longer, but it was unclear at the beginning uh, of the work when or how long it was going to be. What happens if there's a leak? Have you guys been prepped on what to do or uh, what precautions are if there's a leak here? There's been, um, one of our main challenges has always been, uh, you know, the transparency and communication. And so we've been so focused on the day-to-day -day operations and the and the, the work that's been going on that there has been no clear communication or directive from Sunoco related to uh, what happens when um, the pipeline is in operation. Is there any worries as is about what it is doing uh, with residents? Are you guys having issues with people who live here? Uh, you said that there's 140 some residents, 100, 140 some spaces, 124 apartments. And there's maybe close to 200 people that live here, 200 residents. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have had we've had a, a number of different issues, uh, whether it relates to to sound or vehicle traffic uh, in the parking area from the trucks, um, or vibrations, you know, other just general concerns and and, and safety related to the disruption that um, you know bisecting a uh, apartment community and, and being you know 15 feet from someone's someone's window with a 
with a full work operation. Yeah, and you said that you have, uh, on the other side of this wall is more of your apartments, that this was sit, split in half. Yes, that's correct. So we have two buildings on this side, and then there's three buildings on the other side. Got it. And um, have you guys had any extra costs as owners uh, because of this? Yeah, so we've, um, you know, since November, uh, been working on addressing the safety concerns and the safety issues. So we have someone that was brought on um, full time to monitor the the work, and he's been instrumental in in observing some of the issues that have been causing concerns to our residents. And we, um, at times, have had to have our, our own security on site. There's actually some um, some uh, folks here today that that work with us from time to time that are helping. Uh, with the monitoring of some of the activity that's going on so um yes we have had uh engineer costs we've had um you know a lot of a, a, a lot of different costs related to just maintaining safety and fighting for safety here uh at the and at the why have you had to hire extra security uh there were some um complaints from the the gentleman who uh, works for us that does observations um that he was felt he was made to feel uncomfortable by some of the security staff and so we brought someone to uh, walk around with him and to be with him as a presence uh, so that he can continue to do his work and do his observations. What would you have preferred that Sunoco had done uh, in this situation? In the beginning, we should have been brought in and they you know, should have collaborated with us. Sunoco should have collaborated with Glenn Riddle, been more transparent about the timeline, about the impacts that the work was going to have on the community, on the residents. Um, you know, we've been operating this community since uh, 1970, 1971, mm. and we know, we know all the ins and outs. We have residents that have been here for uh, a very long time, and we tend to have residents that stay here. and And we know, we know what the concerns are. We know what the issues might be, and we could have worked together to minimize the safety concerns and any nuisance concerns that might have come up. You had mentioned shaking. Yep. What is the shaking? The uh, the vibration. Yeah, the vibrations. The yeah. Vibrations. So on the other side of this wall, a couple weeks ago was a full-fledged drilling operation so some type of a hdd drilling from our understanding and so that went on for several weeks and that caused uh, quite a bit of vibration to the to the buildings and that was uh, that was very noisy at times and uh the the gentleman that works with us uh had a has a sound meter and so he was able to on, on in addition to the vibration pick up on very high decibel readings of sound um that was uh was a, a major point of concern for for our, our residents here. Is there anything else that you think people should know? Um, I think that it's, it's really important that our, the agencies that are responsible for monitoring and overseeing Sunoco and the, and the pipeline stay involved. And um, whether it's Middletown Township or any of the other various agencies, it's important that they stay involved and they monitor and they look out for the well-being of the residents here in the community and you know, not only Glen Riddle, but in the community in general. Do you have expectations for what is the future of this pipeline? It's been rough during the installation. You don't know what, what the processes are for managing it after this. What comes next? Right now, we're, as you can tell, we still have a full-fledged construction site in the, in the middle of, uh, of our community. So unfortunately, our time and our focus has really been on making sure that the rest of this work is done safely. Um, you know, again, we, we don't have a whole lot of information from you know, from Sunoco, any detailed information about what happens next. Um, right now, our, our our concern is really what's going on right now on, yeah. the, on the property. Uh, I think that, that about sums it up for now. Uh, we're going to talk to Antoinette next. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for talking to thank us. Thank you. And I am here with Antoinette, who is a resident here in Media, Pennsylvania. Yes. Uh, how are you doing, Antoinette? Okay. Doing okay. Well, so how long have you been living here? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. So in November, it's it's been explained to me, construction began for the Mariner East Pipeline owned by Sunoco right here outside of your apartment. Uh, I would say invasion began. In, in an invasion? <laughs> How long has the wall been here? In November, the construction began, and then when was the wall erected? I would say probably December. Well, how close is your apartment to, to the wall? Right there. Maybe eight feet? Six to eight feet, probably. Yeah, we okay. have a six to eight feet uh, gap between, is it your bedroom window and the wall? Yes, yes. And um, how has that affected your life? How has that affected uh, living here? Well, um, the wall is pretty ugly. 
and it has blocked a lot of sunlight that I normally got and one of the reasons I like the apartment. It has kept the noise level down and I think when they work at night there are bright lights in there and of course the wall stops that. It also keeps us from knowing what they're doing too, but... Yeah. How has um, the presence of Sunoco around your apartment uh, changed your living experience? Well, I have a handicapped sister who lives with me. That's who you heard in there. Mm -hmm. um, she's 75. She has cerebral palsy and she's borderline handicapped. So she used to walk around the whole complex and that was really the only exercise she could get. But now it's all cut up and her walk is maybe just this sidewalk, you mm -hmm. know? So it has affected her that way. Also, uh, where we used to take our trash out was just a short walk in front, and we can't go through there anymore, so we have to climb up the hill with our garbage. Had anyone from Sunoco or any other company came and talked to you? Not talked to me, no. They have sent mail, but not talked to us. How long do you think this is going to be here until? They told us May, but I believe it'll probably be June or July. Do you trust Sunoco to... to convey other information to you in the future? No. No, I don't. Is there anything else that you think people should know? My car is filthy because it's parked right out Understood. there. Understood. I had another handicapped spot, but they took that. But then the apartment people moved me to another spot. But the other thing that I wanted to say is this is a wonderful outside hill. Wonderful outside hill. And there are kids who live in these apartments. And this is where they played. In the winter, they'd slide down this hill. After school, they'd have baseball, football, soccer, something out there. They have nowhere to go. And it was a big grassy hill just like this. It was wonderful. Understood. And I feel really badly for the kids. It's one of the reasons I like the apartment is because I heard that joyful noise right outside my window. I'm very happy with this uh, Glen Riddle apartment stations. They've kept us very much informed. And I think also, because we're here with the cameraman, I wanted to point out a couple of things. But I see structural damage happening here, here, there. Mm. And I never noticed it before. I don't know if it's because of the construction that's going on. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you very no much. No problem. Nice meeting uh, yep. you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. My name is Jason Peters for Grid Magazine. Please remember to subscribe to Grid Magazine and check out gridphilly.com. Thank you.